Them or Us is a hextile-based, player-eliminating team competition game with two teams, Zombies and Survivors. The goal of the game is for both teams to discover and capture the resources randomly scattered across the board and use them to eliminate the enemy team from the game. The components of the game are as follows. One game board, 64 map tiles, 60 material chips, 60 food chips, 6 base markers, 3 per team, 1 per color, 24 outpost markers, 12 per team, 4 per color, 30 pawns, 15 per team, 5 per color, 1 die, and 2 rule summary cheat cards. Remember that the survivor team pieces are denoted by a hand symbol and zombie team pieces by a hazard symbol. The first step to starting the game is to get 4 to 6 players and split them evenly between the two teams. If a player is unable to decide what team to play as, they may roll the die to make the choice for them. An even roll becomes a survivor, an odd roll becomes a zombie. If there are five players, the fifth player is automatically a zombie. Now the die must be rolled to determine turn order within the teams, remembering that regardless of order within the teams, the survivor team always goes first, followed by the zombies. First, have every survivor roll until each has a different number. The survivor with the highest roll will go first, followed by the other survivors in descending order. Now the zombies will do the same. Now the game can be set up. Place the board between the two teams, shuffle the map tiles and randomly arrange them face down on the spaces on the board, making sure to keep the arrows on the tiles facing towards the end of the board with the darkened corners. Do not look at the face of any tile. Place the resource chips in separate chip piles within reach of all players. Allow each player to pick the color they want from those available to their team, and then distribute the following pieces to each player, making sure that all of a player's pieces are the same color and appropriate team. One base marker, four outpost markers, and five pawns. Teams may also elect to use a rule summary cheat card, but they are not required. Now each survivor, in order of priority, will take their base marker and place it on any map tile of their choosing, remembering not to look at the tile faces, and leaving at least two tiles of space between each marker. The zombies will do the same and place their base markers on unoccupied tiles, also leaving two tiles of space from all of their markers. Once all players have their base markers down, every player will turn over the map tile they have chosen. It's time to begin the game proper. Upon revealing the occupied tiles, players must decide whether they wish to settle their base marker in the current location or move to another tile. Settling immediately will establish the permanent location of a player's base and give the player one pawn of their color, which will be placed atop their base. If the base is settled on a map tile that has resources, the player will automatically receive those resources, collecting the appropriate amount of resource chips from the chip files. Settling will count as that player's turn and allow the next player to move. A player that chooses not to settle will spend their first turn moving one space onto any unoccupied adjacent map tile, remembering to reveal the newly occupied tile. Unsettled players can continue to move their base marker for as many turns as they wish and settle when and where they choose, though still keeping in mind the two tile space requirement. But no, they will not be able to secure resources, fight battles, or produce pawns. Basically, they won't be able to progress in the game and their only piece will be a sitting duck. Any unsettled base marker that is attacked by an enemy pawn will be immediately captured without need for standard combat procedure, which will be covered later. This will eliminate the marker's owner from play permanently and provide the conqueror with a new base marker to settle, still with two tile space limitations, as a second base. Captured base markers must be flipped over to show their new faction, and they do not provide a free pawn upon settling. Once a base marker has been captured, it will be completely eliminated from play upon a subsequent capture attempt by the original owning team if it remains unsettled. Once pawns are on the field, the game really begins. Each pawn has one action per turn, and a player's turn consists of making all of their pawns perform actions. The actions pawns can perform are as follows. Moving. 
A pawn can be moved one space onto any adjacent tile as long as that tile is unoccupied by any other pawns or by any enemy bases or outposts. Friendly structures can be occupied. If the new tile is currently face down, the player must reveal the face of the tile upon moving to it. Idling. A player can choose not to have a pawn do anything for a turn. Idling can be done anytime and anywhere and can function as a simple turn skip, but is also used to build an outpost. Building an outpost consists of idling one pawn on a desired map tile for three turns. Once the three turns are complete, the player must remember to keep track of this themselves. The player that owns the idling pawn now places one of their outpost markers on the tile and receives any resources denoted by the tile face. Remember that performing any other action will reset the pawn's idle count. This includes participating in combat, no matter the outcome, which cannot be skipped. Players must protect their building pawns. Initiating combat. If a pawn is located on a tile adjacent to an enemy pawn, a player can attempt to destroy the enemy pawn. The attacking player, the combat initiator, rolls the die to determine their attack value. The defending player now rolls the die to determine their own attack value. The winner of the confrontation is whoever rolls the highest attack value and the losing pawn is destroyed, returning the pawn piece and spent resources to the owning player. If the values are tied, then both pawns are stunned and lose their next move. If the winner was the attacker, that pawn moves onto the tile previously occupied by the losing pawn unless the defending pawn was located atop an enemy base or outpost, in which case the winner remains stationary. If the winner was the defender, the winning pawn stays in place. Attacking a base or outpost If a pawn is located on a tile adjacent to an enemy base or outpost, a player can attempt to destroy the enemy structure in a process similar to normal combat. The attacking pawn rolls the die to determine their attack value, and if this value is equal to or greater than the defense value of the target structure, then the structure is destroyed. If this value is less than the defense value of the target structure, then the attacking pawn is stunned and loses its next turn. All outposts have a defense value of 4, and all bases have a defense value of 6. Remember that if an enemy pawn is located atop the targeted base or outpost, the structure cannot be damaged until the pawn is destroyed in combat or moved by its owner. Trading if a pawn occupies a friendly base, a player may attempt to trade resources with the teammate owning the base. Players cannot give resources that they do not have at the time of making the deal, but there is no other limit as to what can be traded. If the trade offer is not accepted, the player may choose to have their pawn perform another action. Note that these resource trades can only be reversed by trading back. Players can give each other resource gifts via trading, meaning that one player can give another resources without taking anything from them in return. Keep this in mind if a teammate has lost all their pawns and lacks sufficient resources of their own to produce more. If the player has enough resources and an unused pawn marker, they can choose to create another pawn and place it atop their base. If a player has multiple bases, they may choose which base to use as their pawn's starting point. Know that if a friendly pawn is occupying a player's base, then they may not create a pawn until the friendly pawn is moved unless they have other bases to use. Pawns are unable to perform an action on the turn they are created. There are two resources in the game, food and material. These resources are used to produce pawns and are collected by constructing outposts on the map tiles containing them. Map tiles contain resources as follows. Grasslands contain nothing. Farms contain 8 food, lakes contain 4 food, marshes contain 2 food, cities contain 8 material, woodlands contain 4 material, and towns contain 2 material. Zombies must have 4 food and 2 material in their chip stores in order to produce a new pawn, and survivors must have 2 food and 4 material. Only the first pawn earned upon settling a base marker is free. Whenever resources are spent to produce a pawn, the appropriate amount of resource chips are then moved to the player's pile of used chips. Used chips cannot be used for anything until they are made usable again upon pawn destruction. Pawns can be destroyed voluntarily, which returns the resources as usual, but also prevents the player from producing new pawns for five turns. 
A pawn destroyed in combat poses no such penalty. Remember that because the first pawn upon settling was free, it does not return any resources upon destruction. If a player's outpost is destroyed, they lose all resources granted by that outpost and must return the appropriate resource chips to the chip piles. If a player does not have enough resources in their usable store to return what they lost, then they can no longer produce pawns until the debt is paid by constructing new outposts, trading for more resources, or destroying pawns to return their resources. The game ends when all of the bases of one team are destroyed or when one team has no pawns left in play and no player on that team has sufficient resources to make more. That team has lost the game and their opponents have inherited the earth. I hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial on how to play Them or Us.